All right, continuing on with this OS dev here. Uh, my last recording I did for this kind of messed up a bit. <laughs> I had to get new audio drivers to play some old multiplayer games like Call of Duty 4, and that ended up uh, making the mic and everything sound pretty terrible and compressed and distorted and garbage. So I'm just re-recording a small part of this, showing mainly what we did with print registers here. I did go into a little bit of graphics things, but that'll be on... A recording that isn't messed up so I'm not gonna be going over that that'll be the next one but this one I'll just go over a small bit of a uh, of print registers here so all I really did was I made another heading for you know the register we want to print out and the memory location that's in that register that we're holding registers print our menu option I'm uh, resetting the screen you'll see that in the one after this I'm not gonna go over that in this recording but just printing the heading and calling print registers and getting a the user input to go back to the main menu. That's all that's doing. So the print registers here that we're calling, um, all that's really going on is I'm moving, basically each register I want to print to the screen, I'm moving into DX, and then we're calling our print hex function to print it out. So the print hex function I changed very slightly. Um, instead of moving CX0, I changed that to exclusive or CX with itself. And I don't know if I did anything else. I think I'm doing SI here. So I'm moving hex string into SI because print string uses the SI register. Um, but all we do is print hex is really, we take the value that's in DX, we AND it with 000F to get the last, uh, get the last character here. The first three will be effectively zero and we'll disregard it. We're just checking if it's a number or a letter and we're moving it into this string, which we move into BX. And then we, we print this string to screen after we, you know, move characters into here according to their their hex values. We're just getting the ASCII equivalent of the hex values, moving it into a, a string and then printing it to the screen. That's all print hex does. If people haven't seen that before. But um, print registers, we're just calling the, you know, printing the heading to the, to the screen. And then I'm printing the DX register first when we print our registers out because I didn't find an easy way off the top of my head the other day to just save DX, the memory location in DX somewhere and then move it back. So I could probably save it maybe in one of the extra registers. I might try that later, but for the moment, just recapping this, I print DX first and then AX, BX, and CX. I'm using a, a variable string called reg string, which I'm just using as a new line. So each register gets its own line and then First one I'm printing is DX, so I started it saying, hey, this is the DX register, and then I have blanks because our register mem location, these blanks are just to pad out blanks until this heading part so that the, uh, the actual memory location prints out under this after these blanks are printed. So into our reg string, when we print, you know, ABC, we print SI, in DI, all we're doing is changing the value of this. So when it says reg string plus two, the value starting at this memory location, this would be one, this would be two, I believe. And then we're getting this. So we're changing this to A. So it'll print, you know, AX and then its location. Then we're changing this character, which will be A to B. So we print BX and then its location and so on and so forth. CX and then the SI register and DI register code segment CS and then DS and then ES. I'm not printing F or GS because I'm not using them really yet, but I might add to that so it'll print F and GS and maybe some other things. Thought about maybe somehow printing the E flags register representation of the flags register, but I wasn't quite sure how to do that. And there's also other registers, I think for floating point and things, XMM or something, other random things that I'm not doing. But anyway, that's all the print register is is doing pretty much. So we go to our terminal. Do I have stuff here? We'll just make clean. So I'll show you all print registers is doing. Um, and I did go into graphics mode. Again, I'll go over this on the next one, basically using 80 by 25 uh, text mode here. But print registers, this is all it does. So it prints out DX first and then AX, BX, CX, SIDI, CS, DS, CS and then their memory locations, which should be correct. DX we're not really using or moving anything into, but I guess it gets reset somewhere along the way because it's set to zero. And BX is set to one, interestingly, CX is three, but um, the segment registers, these are set to 2000 due to 
Let's let my boot sect here. Yeah, they're set to 2,000 because we set them up to 2,000 before we uh, fully boot our kernel and load it. We load uh, all the segment registers to 2,000 before jumping to 2,000 with the far jump because that's where we, we planted our kernel at. So that's why these are still set to 2,000. They haven't been reset after jumping to, uh, to the location. That's all I wanted to show for this short video, just showing print registers. The next one is uh, going over, we, we changed to graphics mode. That's basically all the next part we'll go over. So anyway, I will, uh, I'll see you then. All right, so I ended up just going with a 80 by 25 text mode here. <laughs> and the reasoning is because while you can print text in a graphics mode, it, it prints by default in like a 40 by 25 character text mode even though it's in the graphics. And I'll show you that if I switch this to 13 here. Like, look, see, one, well, one, I can't make it blue either with the right, this this color palette doesn't work with the graphics modes, but um, it prints it in this window and that you get like this fat text and you can do like fancy things. Like if you can see the F there, it prints in blue. So this does change the color of that, but. And then that works because that's still in text mode. This is the 80 by 25 text mode. Let's see, you get a bigger window and it looks looks a bit cleaner, a bit clearer. But we don't want that. Look at this. That's just ugly. I don't want that. You know? But anyway, that's why I'm moving just to, to AL3 instead of 13. And then if I ever want to switch between, it's just changing, you know, one character here. So that's not too bad. I can do text mode for menus and things and then graphics mode for, for graphics things. So I might make a little, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> make another menu option. I want to do like the cal uh, basic calculator thing and then maybe mess with graphics modes a bit. So I'll probably try and do that. I'll show off the, uh, I think it's int 10 AH zero C or AHC for printing a graphics pixel. I guess I'll do that. I might do like a graphics test option. Let's do that because visual things are nice. People want to see visuals, right? That's why they don't watch these videos because they're boring, because they're boring, nothing to see. So we'll add a, a little graphics option here. After here, let's do compare ALG. Ooh. We'll do a graphics test or graphics mode test. Let's do that. We'll jump equal to graphics test. Let's just do that. Another thing here. We'll add it to, what are we adding it to? The file table heading? No. This, the menu string. Yes, Let's do it here. Of course. G. Graphics mode tests. Do a little thingamajig here. Put it down under the register values. But before the end program, of course. Graphics mode test underscore. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Let's reset the screen again. What would be nice is if I I could put this code into its own uh, little thing, so I don't have to keep doing this every time. Maybe I'll do that. Let's do that as well, right at the moment, so I forget the other thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, I'm gonna make another source folder and call it screen. I suppose for all our screen stuff and let's make a file called reset text screen or something text mode screen I don't know reset screen text mode I don't know something like that because I want to I want to make it just put this code in there so we'll reset the screen but in text mode and I'll have one for resetting the screen in graphics mode so that if I want just a clean slate that's you know blue or whatever I can just call this and include it like I am but it'll abstract the logic a little bit we'll just uh, we'll do that we'll call it reset text screen reset text screen dot ASM oh let's do that Oh, I could have just made it in here, but that's okay. And here I'll put our put our extra heading there. Okay, so what do we want to call this? Just reset text screen. Might as well put it like that. And then I'm just gonna put this code in there. This right here. Let us do that. Set the video mode and then change the color palette. 
So I found that when you're changing the color palette, you can only change the background color for text. The foreground does not change, but when you print out the text, this is just a separate thing. If I print out the text in here, this BL changes the foreground color. Well, if you're in graphics mode, if you're in a text mode, this doesn't do anything. But if you're in a graphics mode, this changes um, the text itself. Like this text is, you know, white and this is blue. This will change that, but it won't change the background behind it. Um, but you can change the background with this color palette, at least like this. So I could not find a way to change the background for text within a graphics mode. So that is why, also why I'm not doing graphics mode at the moment. I'll just use it for graphical things. For <laughs> for text and menus, I'll do text modes. That's what I'll be going forward with for this, uh, this OS here. I'll do, I'll just do reset screen state in our kernel and I'll do call reset text screen. All right, and then after this, I'm gonna put a return. Return. We'll return to caller. So this should do this and return. Okay, and then where else do I have this code? Right here. Reset screen state. And call reset text screen. Look at this clean. I see it looks cleaner already, barely. We're just replacing lines. Even though when we assemble the file, it'll still be, you know, as big as if we hadn't done this. Um, it looks a little cleaner in our source, so we abstract the logic a little bit. So that's always nice, right? Always nice. Let's go down here. All right, anywhere else we do this? No? Nowhere else? Okay, good. So we'll do another include file. Include file, yes. So this will be, instead of print, this will be in screen. And it'll be reset text screen dot asm there we go all right and we wrote that so let's see if that changes anything or doesn't work or whatnot undefined symbol graphics test nice that's because i didn't do anything for it did i him yeah. g all right graphics underscore test because we want to do something here for the graphics test i'll just plot like well we can reset the graphics window let's make a reset graphics window thing since we did the, the screen state we can do graphics test i'm just gonna have this jump to main menu at the moment all right so if i do this option it'll just jump back to the main menu that's fine So this still works. We got our lovely graphics mode, test added. We got the 80 by 25 text mode, file program loader. Print the register values, still works. Okay, so this should just redisplay this. All right, so we're doing well so far. We're getting somewhere. It just takes me a long time and I don't have much time to do it in. So I ramble a lot, <laughs> but let's go back the source. So we have reset text screen. So what I'm going to do is make reset graphics uh -huh, screen. There we go. Which will be the same thing pretty much. Except not the same. But um, reset text screen. Let's just, there's a way to, there's a way to select all in a file, isn't there? Is it select X, C, X, C, H? No, that's, that's help, obviously. But you know what? It's, it's fine. I'll just do this. We'll just do this. Reset graphics screen. There we go. Reset a graphics mode screen. And for this, all we're going to change is we'll bam that to a 1. So 13, AO 13, INT 10, AH 0. It's 320 by 200. 256 colors, bam, graphics mode. I also think I lied in the previous part of when I was recording this and I said that the memory for this memory mapped IO video stuff starts at B800. I think it starts at A000 or A00 for uh, for color. I think for monochrome and text it does, it is at B800, but if you wanna mess with color and writing to video memory to get colors and stuff on the screen, I think the memory location is a thousand something like that but i'll mess with that in the future as i'm writing stuff to screen but let's let's reset the graphics mode screen 
let's call this reset graphic graphics screen yeah that's what i named it right right here yeah okay oh you can click on that that's cool didn't know that so for this let us call reset graphics screen so, but this will just give us a black screen by default. Um, this won't do anything. This won't make it blue or anything. Might make the text blue, but that's not gonna be a big help. If we wanna make the screen blue in graphics mode, I don't know if I do. I might just mess with uh, mess with stuff. I don't think, this won't do anything, so I'm gonna get rid of it, but it'll reset the screen to just black graphics. But I wanna try out and make sure the graphics stuff is working, right? So I can do, AH0C um, to print graphics pixel with int 10. So you have to tell it where to write to. I think in CX and, uh, and DX. And to, to do that, I have to remember. So we move into AL, what color we want. And 0, 1 would be blue. Uh, two, is, 2 might be red, I don't remember. 1 is blue though, so we'll do that. And the VGA color palette, standard one. The H is the page number, which we're just doing page 0 right now. I think if we wanted to do like double buffering and stuff, we would use different pages, I believe. Of course, I could definitely be wrong, probably. CX, we want to do the row number. Let's do page number. Right, CX we want to do column. CX is the column number, which is zero based. So if we're in 320 by 200, we have columns zero to 319 to equal 320 columns. And then we have rows zero to 199 to equal 200 columns. So I'll just do somewhere in the middle, but not really. I'll just do like 100. But I don't know if you have to do it in hex mode or not. What is, because I'm an idiot and don't have these things memorized. I'm not good at math. <laughs> Decimal 100, what is that in hex? 64, wow, that's that's pretty easy, I should know that. You know, I don't think you have to do it in hex, but I'm just doing it in hex because why not? Column, this is the column number, and then in dx, right, we move the row number. So row, I'll do the same. Row 100, effectively, in decimal. And this will plot one graphics pixel in the middle of the screen, so I don't think we'll be able to see it, uh, but we will, I'll just hold at the moment, we'll see. We probably won't be able to see it at all. Or it might just be a singular dot that's blue, so I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to see it, maybe we won't. Undefined symbol reset graphics screen. Oh, that's because I don't have it included, yes. It would help if you include the files you want to include, wouldn't it? That would probably help a whole lot, a whole dang lot. And it did, okay. So G, uh, you probably can't see it at all, but there is a dot right here. <laughs> so we'll probably do something like, either I'll zoom this in and post editing and make a funny wacky noise, or I'll end up drawing a, maybe let's draw like a line or a square so that you can see it effectively. But there is a dot right here, it is working. Let's just draw like a square. Let's do a test square. All right, these things I don't think change. I don't think the, the registers are clobbered or anything. So we'll put our code here. Um, normally in like C or something, I would do like four column number to column number and then another loop row number to row number and then we'll loop through those values to draw it every pixel and get a square. That's, that's what I'm gonna try to do right here. Um, also keep in mind this is slow comparatively, just calling int 10 again and again. If we wanted to do this fast, we would write directly to video memory, again at, I think, A000, which I can't <laughs> hit it, A000. If we wrote directly to the memory here, I think it's one byte for a character and then one byte for um, the color. Um, but we want to start at 100, which is what I'm doing here. And then we want to, this is the upper left corner for these two things, I believe. This is the upper left corner this draws the pixel at, so we want to go across. Let's do across like, I don't know, 50 and down 50. Let's make a little loop here. Call it GFX loop, why not? Or square loop, let's call it square loop. 
then we'll increment CX uh, increment DX well we don't want to do that increment CX we want to go CX say up to 50 times so we'll compare it to oh 150 let's do decimal because that's easier for me to understand so because <laughs> I am a brainlet all right increment CX will compare to 150 it's not gonna be there just yet uh, jump equal well we'll do jump not equal square loop I guess increment CX let's plot the pixel so that'll be at 101 compared to 150 if it's not equal we'll go back to the square loop if it is equal then we're gonna we'll increment DX we call this row loop or square loop square I don't know square column and square row that's easy enough to understand right not really probably probably let's do square column loop so after we print out the first column all the way across and we want to go down here increment DX CX we want to move back the original value And then go back to square column loop. Well, we can move 99. Because it'll increment it right when it goes back, which will be 100. I didn't do this effectively, but you know what? We're going to get the point across, damn it, one way or another. <laughs> uh, square column loop. Okay. Now I'll print out the next one. Increment DX. Um, int... 10. Alright, compare DX to 150. Right? Yeah, we'll move CX 99. Alright, compare to 150 and then we'll do jump not equal. Alright. Not equal, we'll go back to the column. We don't even need this part, this at all. We'll do that. So we'll do a starting pixel. Like you could do this a better way. I'm not doing this a very good way. Starting pixel of square. Pixels for columns. And then this is go down. Excuse me. Go down one row. All right. And then it'll jump back. Pixels for next column. Um, or well, for next row, I guess. Go down one row, print the pixels for that row by going across all the way to the column. So this will print CX0, or well, CX100 to 150. This will go across, and then it'll increase the DX, move it back. If DX is not at 150, we're going to go back and print the next row until DX is at 150. So 150. So this should be a square of roughly 50 by 50 pixels. That's what I'm hoping. I don't even need the int 10 here, I don't think. Well, I'm going to do it anyway, whatever. So let's see what happens. Probably nothing good. Uh, recipe for target failed. Invalid operand because I'm comparing to 150. Yeah, this needs to compare CX to 150. There we go. So this should print a square. That's all I was trying to do. There we go. 50 by 50 square. So you, we can test the graphics mode is working. And bam, that's how you do it. Um, that's how you kind of do a basic. This this could be better, obviously. This isn't very effective because I can make this all into one loop. But anyway, that's how you make a square. I think eventually I'm going to abstract and make a, a small graphics mode assembly a library here to print like a line, maybe horizontal line, vertical line, a square, triangle, stuff like that. And we can make scenes or pictures or we could start to make games or scenes or something, you know. I said scenes twice, that's all right. But <laughs> I might try to do that. I don't know, this part or the next couple parts, but yeah, I'll either do graphics mode stuff or I'll make like the calculator and go on, but I just wanted to show you, hey, graphics mode works, it's a test, it's nice. Instead of halt, I'm going to take int 16, how do I do that again? Is it this? All right. So we'll just wait, the user will marvel at our square and then they press something and they'll go back to the main menu, so that's all we're going to do. So we can have continuation here for our technically an OS color I'm gonna have it be I think two is red but we'll find out I think this is red it's either red or green or neither and I'm completely and utterly wrong 
But let's see here, graph, it's green, two is green. And we have an extra pixel at the bottom as well, but that's okay. You press something, you go back to the main menu. So look, we got a square, isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. So we can mess with that. Um, but yeah, that's how you do basic graphics mode stuff in a square. I'm gonna continue this on the next one. So hopefully I edit this down and it's short and sweet, probably not, but we'll see. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next part of this that I do. I'm either going to do more graphics mode stuff or try to start a small integer or decimal calculator. Probably just whole numbers, so integer calculator to do something and then uh, move on. Maybe make an editor. Try to make an editor, which will be long and frustrating, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, we'll do that a graphics mode stuff on the next one. Maybe start a graphics library. And uh, But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you then.